Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Key Concepts in System Design series. In modern computer systems, rate limiting is an essential technique that helps prevent system overloads and ensures stable service, especially in high traffic situations. For example, during a flash sale on an e-commerce website, rate limiting can prevent too many users from accessing the system at once and causing it to crash. In API services, rate limiting ensures that the service remains stable by preventing any single user from overloading the system and disrupting access for others. Additionally, rate limiting algorithms are common topics in technical interviews, testing a candidate's understanding of traffic management and system performance optimization. Today, we will explore five common rate limiting algorithms, the leaky bucket algorithm, the token bucket algorithm, the fixed window counter algorithm, the sliding window log algorithm, and the sliding window counter algorithm. By learning these algorithms, you'll gain insights into how to choose the right rate limiting strategy based on your system's needs, enabling efficient traffic management. The first rate limiting algorithm is the leaky bucket algorithm. You can think of it as a bucket with a hole at the bottom. The bucket has a fixed capacity and water can be poured into it at any rate, but the water leaks out at a steady rate from the hole. If the water is poured in faster than it leaks out, the bucket will overflow and the excess water will spill out. That is, it gets discarded. Let's look at an example. In a computer system, the leaky bucket can be seen as a first in, first out, FIFO queue. Suppose we have a queue with a capacity of five and the system can process two requests per second. At the start of the first second, a user sends four requests. These requests are added to the queue. Since the system processes two requests per second, it handles the first two requests, leaving two in the queue. At the start of the second second, the user sends four more requests. Now, with two requests already in the queue, there are a total of six requests. Since the queue capacity is five, only the first three new requests are kept and one extra request is discarded. During this second, the system processes two requests, leaving three in the queue. In the third second, no new requests arrive, so the system processes two of the remaining requests, leaving one request in the queue. In the fourth second, with no new requests, the system processes the last request in the queue, leaving it empty and ready for new requests. As this example shows, the leaky bucket algorithm ensures that requests are processed at a fixed rate. Even if a large number of requests arrive in a short time, the system queues them and processes them steadily, preventing overload. If too many requests arrive and exceed the bucket's capacity, the extra requests are discarded. The strength of the leaky bucket algorithm is its ability to provide stable traffic control, ensuring that the system processes requests at a consistent rate, preventing overloads. Its simplicity makes it easy to understand and implement. However, its limitation is that it lacks flexibility in handling sudden traffic spikes, and any excess requests beyond the system's capacity are discarded. The leaky bucket algorithm is well suited for scenarios where stable request handling is needed. It is often used in network bandwidth management to limit data transfer rates, in video streaming to ensure smooth data transmission, and in certain server request handling to maintain a steady processing rate and prevent overload. The second rate limiting algorithm is the token bucket algorithm. Unlike the leaky bucket algorithm, the token bucket algorithm allows the system to handle more requests than the fixed rate for short periods, making it better suited for dealing with burst traffic. Here's how the token bucket algorithm works. Tokens are added to a bucket at a fixed rate. When a user makes a request, the system checks if there is a token available in the bucket. If there is, the system takes a token and processes the request. If no token is available, the system may either discard the request or delay its processing. The bucket has a limited capacity, so when it reaches the maximum number of tokens, the system pauses adding new tokens until some are used. Let's consider an example. Suppose we have a token bucket with a capacity of five tokens. The system generates three tokens per second, and each request consumes one token. Here's how the system handles requests. At the start of the first second, the system generates three tokens, 
so the bucket now contains three tokens. A user makes two requests, and the system takes two tokens to handle these requests, leaving one token in the bucket. At the start of the second second, the system generates three more tokens, so the bucket now contains four tokens. The user makes five requests, and the system uses four tokens to handle the first four requests. However, since there are no tokens left, the fifth request is rejected. At the start of the third second, the system generates three tokens again, so the bucket now contains three tokens. No new requests arrive during this second, so the tokens remain in the bucket. At the start of the fourth second, the system continues to generate three tokens, but since the bucket can hold a maximum of five tokens, it now contains five tokens, ready for the next requests. The advantage of the token bucket algorithm is that it offers some flexibility, allowing burst requests up to the bucket's capacity, making it suitable for handling short-term traffic spikes. Additionally, it is relatively simple and easy to understand and implement. However, it has some drawbacks. First, there can be memory usage issues, as having a separate token bucket for each user can lead to increased memory consumption as the number of users increases. Second, it doesn't guarantee a smooth request rate. Finally, tuning the parameters like bucket capacity and token generation rate can be complex and requires careful adjustment based on the actual system needs. The token bucket algorithm is widely used for API rate limiting. For example, public API can use this algorithm to control the request rate from individual users or applications, preventing server overload due to excessive requests. It can handle occasional request peaks while maintaining overall traffic stability. APIs like Stripes and AWS EC2s use the token bucket algorithm for rate limiting. The third rate limiting algorithm is the fixed window counter algorithm. This algorithm divides time into fixed windows, such as per second or per minute, and counts the number of requests within each window. If the number of requests exceeds a set threshold, any excess requests will be rejected until the next time window starts. At the end of each window, the counter resets and begins counting again. Let's look at an example. Suppose we use a fixed window counter that resets every minute with a threshold of allowing up to five requests per minute. In the first minute window, at the 10 second mark, the system receives two requests. Since the request count does not exceed the threshold, all requests are processed. The counter records two requests. At the 30-second mark, the system receives three requests. The request count still does not exceed the threshold, so all requests are processed. The counter now records a total of five requests. At the 40-second mark, the system receives two more requests. The system sees that the total request count is seven, which exceeds the threshold, so these two requests are rejected. At the end of the first minute, the counter resets to zero. In the second minute window, at the one minute and 40 second mark, the system receives one request. The request does not exceed the threshold, so it is processed. The counter records one request. At the one minute and 50 second mark, the system receives three requests. The request count is still within the threshold, so all requests are processed. The counter now records a total of four requests. At the end of the second minute, the counter resets to zero. In the third minute window, at the two minute and 10 second mark, the system receives four requests. The request count does not exceed the threshold, so all requests are processed. The counter records four requests. At the end of the third minute, the counter resets to zero. From this example, we see that the fixed window counter algorithm divides time into fixed windows, with request counts within each window being independent, ensuring the system does not overload due to temporary spikes in requests. However, one potential issue with this algorithm is that while the request count within each window does not exceed the threshold, requests may exceed the threshold at the window boundaries. For example, in this case, from 1 minute and 40 seconds to 2 minutes and 10 seconds, the system handled a total of eight requests, one plus three plus four, exceeding the threshold of five requests per minute. 
It is worth noting that the fixed window counter algorithm may seem similar to the token bucket algorithm discussed earlier, but there are differences. The fixed window counter resets the count to zero at the end of each time window, while the token bucket algorithm allows unused tokens to accumulate and be used in the next period. Additionally, the complexity of state management differs between the two. The counter's state management is simpler, while the token bucket's state management is more complex. The advantages of the fixed window counter algorithm are that it is simple and easy to implement, with clear request statistics for each time window and no need for complex state management. It also allows for burst requests as long as they do not exceed the window threshold. The downside is that requests can exceed the threshold at the window boundaries, potentially up to twice the limit. The fixed window counter algorithm is suitable for scenarios that require a simple rate limiting strategy, where the overall system traffic is steady but has short-term fluctuations. It is commonly used for API rate limiting, controlling the number of requests per time period to avoid system overload. Additionally, it can be effective in access control scenarios like limiting login attempts to prevent brute force attacks. The fourth rate limiting algorithm is the sliding window log algorithm. It improves upon the fixed window counter algorithm by addressing the problem of request spikes at the boundaries of fixed windows. Unlike the fixed window approach, the sliding window algorithm uses a dynamic window that shifts as time progresses. In this algorithm, the system logs the timestamp of each accepted request. When a new request arrives, the system checks the log to count the number of requests processed within the recent window. If the count is within the limit, the request is accepted and logged, otherwise it is rejected. This method allows for more precise and smoother traffic control. Let's look at an example. Suppose the time window is set to 10 seconds, with a maximum of three requests allowed. At the first second, the first request arrives. The system allows it and logs the timestamp as one. At the third and eighth seconds, two more requests arrive one after another. Since they're within the limit, the system allows them and logs their timestamps. The log now contains one, three, and eight. At the ninth second, another request arrives. But since there have already been three requests in the last 10 seconds, the system rejects this request. At the 12th second, a new request comes in. The system first clears any expired entries, removing the entry from the one second mark since it's outside the 10 second window, leaving only the three and eight second timestamps in the log. Since there's room now, the system accepts the request and logs the timestamp as 12. The log now holds three, eight, and 12. At the 14th second, another request arrives. The system removes the expired timestamp three, leaving eight and 12. With space available, the system accepts this request and updates the log to eight, 12, and 14. At the 15th second, a new request arrives. The system checks for expired entries but finds none that are over 10 seconds old, so no entries are removed. Since the log is full, this request is rejected. The advantage of the sliding window log algorithm is that it provides fine-grained traffic control, accurately counting the number of requests within the sliding window by using timestamps. This avoids the boundary issue seen in the fixed window algorithm. However, this precision comes at the cost of increased complexity. The system must maintain a log and check or update it with each request, which consumes more computational resources, especially when dealing with a high volume of requests. The fifth rate limiting algorithm is the sliding window counter algorithm. It strikes a balance between the fixed window counter and sliding window log algorithms. This algorithm uses sliding windows but does not record request timestamps. Instead, it manages and smooths traffic by weighting the request counts of adjacent windows. For a new request that falls at X percent of the current window's time, the formula is weight equals open parenthesis, one minus X percent, close parenthesis, times last window requests plus current window requests. If weight plus one does not exceed the threshold, the request is accepted, otherwise, it is denied. Let's look at an example. Suppose the system threshold is to handle a maximum of three requests every five seconds. At seconds three, four, and five, 
the system handles three requests. At this point, the counter for the first window is three. At the sixth second, the system receives one request. This is at 20% of the current window, or the second window. The current window counter is zero. Using the formula, weight equals open parenthesis, one minus 20%, close parenthesis, times three plus zero equals 2.4. Adding the current request, 2.4 plus one equals 3.4, which exceeds the threshold of three, so the system denies the request. This shows that even though the current window's request count is below the threshold, the system still rejects the request by considering the load from the previous window. At the seventh second, the system receives another request. This is at 40% of the current window, with the current window counter at zero. The calculation is weight equals open parenthesis, one minus 40% close parenthesis times three plus zero equals 1.8. 1.8 plus 1 equals 2.8, which is below the threshold of 3, so the system accepts this request, and the current window counter increases to 1. Compared to the fixed window counter algorithm, the sliding window counter algorithm is more precise and smooths out traffic at window boundaries, but it is more complex to implement. Compared to the sliding window log algorithm, it is simpler to calculate and requires less storage. However, it is not as precise as the sliding window log algorithm, and requests can still exceed the threshold at window boundaries. Overall, it is a compromise between the fixed window counter and sliding window log algorithms. In practical applications, choosing the right rate limiting algorithm requires considering factors like system scale, traffic patterns, and the need for precision. Remember, rate limiting isn't just about protecting your system, it's also important to inform API users that their requests are being limited. The best practice is to include rate limiting information in the HTTP response headers, helping users adopt appropriate retry or wait strategies and avoid unnecessary frustration. If you found this lesson helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the ByteVigor channel to stay updated with more great content. See you in the next lesson.